Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to Lincoln Lake in Glacier National Park in Montana. The lake sits at an elevation of 4,849 feet high and is nestled between Lincoln Peak and Mount Jackson. The pine, fir, and spruce trees here are thick and mixed with quaking aspen throughout. Willow and berry bushes complete the emerald tapestry that soothes the minds of observers while offering picturesque mountain scenery that human artists dream of painting. Common animals in this area include white-tailed deer, elk, and moose with predators like coyotes, bobcats, cougars, wolves, and bears prowling the land. The park has always been a stronghold for wildlife, and bears in particular. Grizzly bears were once rare here, but have since rebounded to sustainable populations. Black bears have always been common here. In fact, some park visitors would say they are all too common. In the hot month of July 1972, hikers have been accessing the backcountry utilizing the trail system while they explore. Their exploration sometimes infringes upon locations of forest animals violating their privacy. One such incursion brought two park rangers, Michael Ober and Dave Shea, to a campground in the trail system near Lincoln Lake. A bear attack had been reported the prior day and the rangers made their way by horseback to the Lincoln Lake trail system. As they arrived, they could see a disheveled and chaotic scene. The victim's crumpled tent told part of the story, and in the bushes behind it lay more clues. A downed sleeping bag had been ripped open with its white and gray feathers strewn about. Following a dangling cable designed to suspend food caches, the rangers found a backpack on the ground. It had clearly seen its better days, with tears and rips in its fabric indicating a bear's angst for the human interloper. Scattered around the campground were random items that caught the bear's attention for one reason or another. Cans of food and containers bore punctures made by the bear, but whether it was hungry, curious, or expressing anger at the human scent present could be debated. Surveying the scenery and trying to decide where to begin, the rangers examined some of the items. Following the attack the prior days, they had been tasked with retrieving the camper's personal belongings and making sure nothing was left behind. There were food wrappers and empty containers laying all around, but it wasn't clear if they had been bagged before the bear invaded and scattered afterward or during. It may have retrieved the items from a trash bag, but if the camper had left them around like that, then he created the environment that had led to his attack. The lakeshore gave up its portion of the story as well, with black bear tracks indelibly pressed deeply into the mud. A nearby pile of bear scat was analyzed by the rangers by using a stick to separate it. The bear had passed a cheese wrapper and a portion of a plastic spoon, which couldn't have been comfortable. The victim of the attack, a backcountry hiker and camper named Randy, indicated that the bear had chased him up a tree. For some reason, the bear came up after Randy and pulled him from it at a height of about 25 feet. The rangers approached the tree which bore the claw marks of the bear on its trunk and a smattering of limbs around its base which had been knocked free while the bear climbed. Using their binoculars to more closely examine the tree, the rangers could see broken limbs and claw marks made as the bear climbed in pursuit of Randy. The gashes in the bark told a desperate and terrifying aspect of the attack. Before gathering Randy's belongings, the events of the prior days flooded back to Ranger Ober's mind. For park rangers, this time of year requires in-person visits to each backcountry campsite to evaluate them for safety, cleanliness, and upkeep. The campsite at Lincoln Lake was an 8.8-mile hike in, then the same hike out. Given the time of year, Ober decided to travel the bulk of the route in the early morning hours to beat the heat, and hopefully the flies. Ober had only traveled a quarter of a mile up the trail and had been lost in watching his boots as they found footholds up the initial climb of the trail. As Ober stepped, his vision was filled with something straight out of a horror movie. He stepped back as the form of a man appeared on the trail, only a few feet in front of him. Ober's initial thought was that the man was dead. In his hand, he still clutched a flashlight. 
Dried black blood covered his head and neck, and flies swarmed around like miniature vultures waiting for their opportunity to feed. The stench of rotting blood and body odor combined to create a nauseating smell that tested Ober's gut. Staring into the man's face, Ober searched for a sign of life in his swollen eyes. After a few seconds of staring in disbelief, Ober heard the man stammering something. His statement was a warning to Ober. Don't go in there. There's a bear. It's his home. He lives there. What Ober didn't know was that the man's name was Randy, and he had been attacked by a black bear after pitching camp along the Lincoln Lake shoreline. The bear had raided Randy's camp in the early morning hours. Randy had fled up the tree in an attempt to give ground to the bear and avoid an attack. The black bear pursued Randy up the tree and repeatedly bit into his bare feet. Each time it bit, it would try to pull Randy from the tree by using its weight to overcome his hold on the tree's limbs. It took the bear several attempts at this, with each attempt ripping gashes into Randy's lower legs, ankles, and feet. In its final and successful attempt to pull him down, Randy fell the 25-foot height as his head bounced off of tree limbs on the way down. One of the limbs caught him under the chin, jamming his teeth together and ripping a hole through his tongue. As he hit the ground, Randy's head slammed against the soil, breaking his nose, cheekbone, and the small bones of his eye socket. After crashing to the ground, the bear must have fled, which allowed Randy to grab a flashlight and cram his gashed and torn up feet into his hiking boots. With his retreat lit by a flashlight, Randy made his way almost nine miles back toward the Lincoln Lake trailhead, where Ober had found him. Ober helped the exhausted man to his feet and assisted him down the remainder of the trail. Periodically resting, Randy would explain to Ober additional details of his predicament. He explained that after he'd set up his camp along Lincoln Lake, the bear had mauled him early the following morning. Since the attack, he had hiked through the night, sometimes at a snail's pace, until he heard cars passing. At times, their headlights would flash through the trees, so he knew he was close to rescue. Unable to walk any further, this is where Ober had found Randy, laying on his back and exhausted. Once the two men emerged at the trailhead, Ober drove them in his car to a nearby ranger on patrol. In the day before, assistance was as close as the other end of a 911 call. Hospitals were the best option for life-saving support. Ranger Hyatt's patrol car was soon headed to the hospital in nearby Whitefish so Randy could receive medical assistance. The medical staff immediately set out cleaning and suturing Randy's wounds. The circumstances around his appearance had drawn the morbid fascination of the hospital crew, who doted on Randy so they could get a glimpse of his wounds. Ober contacted Dave Shea and filed the incident report as soon as he had gathered all the information needed. His superiors directed the two rangers to return to Randy's camp and round up his possessions the next day. As Ober prepared to head to Lincoln Lake, two adages came to his mind. When a leaf falls in the woods, the eagle sees it. The deer hears it, and the bear smells it. This saying is a tribute to the bear's keen sense of smell, but the last one is a tribute to their majesty and power. As the retired park ranger and grizzly bear attack victim Jerry DeSanto was quoted as saying, Wilderness ain't wilderness unless there's something out there that can get you. If there was no other lesson from Randy's bear attack, let the main lesson be that you should never camp dirty in bear country. After reviewing the harrowing tale of Randy's bear attack, I have a few questions for you. Would you ever expect to escape a bear attack by climbing a tree? Would a firearm have changed the outcome of this attack? Do you think you would be tough enough to hike nine miles through the dark with gashed legs and broken facial bones? I doubt I could, and I don't want to find out. I'll be glad to read and reply to your thoughts, so please post them in the comments section below, and let's talk about it. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness, and it's fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below. So check out the bargains there while you shop. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country.